Hello gang, this is Alonzo Callip. I'm going to talk to you about Cloaky Camping. As you can see, we're in Ushit, and we are sitting in a manticore. Just a quick look, because everybody seems to like looking at fits. Really, the most important thing you want is a covert ops cloaking device. There are several ships that can fit this, but the covert ops cloaking device will allow you to warp while cloaked. There are other couple bonuses that you can also fit onto these ships. You can carry the covert Sino Searle field generator. This is your covert Sino. This allows you to bring in a uh, bomber or blops fleet, black ops battleships, or force recons. But you cannot bring in uh, ships that would be titan bridged. It can only be brought in the uh, a Blops Bridge, a Black Ops Bridge. Some combat probes, always really useful, and then a web and a scram. Everything else is a uh, bonus. Some bombs for DPS, but mostly the what you need is the cloak. All right, let's go take a look around. What does cloaky camping actually do? Well, there's a couple things. You're looking for information. You're looking for information, and you're trying to get the enemy to dock up and go to bed. You don't want the big toys out flying around. Cloaky camping is a very useful technique. All you got to do is put one guy in system, and he's going to be scary enough that a lot of the big toys won't play. You can see I just cloaked. Put that... Covert Ops cloaking device allows you to do is warp cloaked. So I'm landing here 100 off of the sun cloaked. If anyone were out hanging around out here, they wouldn't even know I was here. So essentially right now, no one could ever find me. The only way that I can be decloaked is if someone comes within 2,500 meters of me. Now, that could be the drone of somebody who's out flying around, but I can't be combat probed down. And right here in this position, I'm pretty safe. Now, just sitting at 100 on the sun is a pretty bad spot to be. So let's make it safe. So we are sitting on one celestial. Let's warp to another. We're warping within 100. Probably a good idea to warp to something within D scan range so that you know it's clear before you warp. And then we are warping. I'm going to drop a bookmark, call it safe, and drop it. Now that safe is in between those two positions, between the sun and this celestial wherever I am here. Now if I want to be really cool, I can just go to my locations, safe, warp to within zero. If you want to do that really fast, you can just hit the L button. That'll bring in your tax. So, I'm back at my safe location. Now, I could just go make lunch. That doesn't uh, really provide me with much value, but my presence in the area is a threat. So, what can we do that isn't just taking a nap? Let's look at the intel we might be able to gather. Now, when I'm talking about intel, we don't want just extra BS information. We want actionable intelligence, something good that our FCs and our leadership team might be able to work off of to, I don't know, um, find a, a Titan if it's logged in, find a Blops Bridge or a Black Ops Battleship if it's logged in. Um, how do we get to that? How do we distill that information just by sitting on the screen right here? So we have 61 in local. 61 in local. A lot of these guys are bads, big bads. In it, guys. 61, how many neutrals do we have? One, two, three. This guy is me. So we have 58, now not including the neutrals. How many friends do we have? Well, we've got me, 
another, so two, three, three friends. So that puts our total number at 55. So we are looking at 55 in it dudes. Where are these guys at? What are they doing? All right, so I happen to know a little bit about this system. We're just going to go back within the range of the keep. Again, it's a good idea if you want to be super safe while you're warping around. Jump Celestial to Celestial within D-Scan range so that you know they're clear before you land. Don't go back to a saved attack if you had landed there decloaked because somebody could have combat scanned you down and then saved that tack into their personal folders. So we've got a warp disruptor, but that's probably on the UQ, UQ gate. You can see how how often I'm descanning. It's something that you, you, you need to pick up on, and kind of think about it as your uh, early warning system. That stabber was the guy that just warped off over there. But from this position, we have some information we, on this Fortazar. This Fortazar is interesting. Let's go check it out. We know that this bubble right here is on that gate, so we're just not going to warp back to the gate from that Fortazar. And we don't see anything else. The Fortazar was within D scan range, so we can warp to within 100 safely. So let's go sit on that Fortazar and see what we can see. So we're looking for 55 in it, dudes. And there are 55 sitting in this Fortazar. So there is nothing else in this space, in this system, for us to find. So that's a quick trick, a little bit of math, using local and um, knowing where the staging system is or the staging uh, citadel, just to know if you should be hunting around in the system right now. So it seems that we've got our stabber friend flying around again. <clears throat> so, what else can we do? Well, we know that there are 55 init dudes logged in, sitting in local at 0, 0100. You could take that down as a note. Oh, here's a good one. So there's an arc by Pukit, named Pukit. I missed the name. So we should have gone down by one. If I was saving local, I could have figured out who that guy was. That was real quick. Sorry, guys, I didn't catch it. But we can play the same game still. We can use the information we're getting, local numbers, the number of people sitting in our Fortazar, to, uh, to make a sort of a chart of activity, right? So we know it's 0, 0100. There are 55 init dudes here. Let's say we log back in or we go back to that Keepstar and check this system out every hour for the next three days or um, every couple of hours, every four hours, every eight hours. We could get an idea of when this group has their peak of activity. You can then use that information to schedule your fleets if you want to fly when they're not at peak or when you want to fly and meet them head on. Now, that's a lot of effort to get something you could just get from Dotland. Going on the Dotland website, you can get the same information. You can see what, based off of activity, jumps per minute, whatever, that um, <clears throat> when this, this group is act most active. So that's not really actionable intelligence, kind of like I was saying before. That's more like extra stuff. Now, if you wanted to get really nitty-gritty and, and super into the weeds with your recon, you can do that, and it's sometimes kind of fun. It's like an intelligence effort. But what we're going to focus on is actionable intel. Now, we had a really good example here, and I kind of missed it because I was talking about extra information. But actionable intelligence, let's say that we had uh, this stabber guy. This stabber guy, we think he's sitting on the UQ gate. Let's warp back over to the Keep Star and see if we can't get eyes on him. He's probably sitting in that bubble trying to camp. So what we're thinking is we want to know if this pilot, uh, the pilot of the, the stabber, 
what his name is, some information about him. We can see he's just sitting off at a ping. He, a Naomi Valente can fly a stabber. He can fly a stabber. He's warping over to his bubble. Interesting. That stabber's name, that particular ship, Zabajar, whatever it is. So if you wanted to get really into the weeds with some actionable intelligence, you could note down that Naomi Valente can fly a stabber. Now, imagine if this stabber was a dread. You now know the name of a dread pilot, a dread pilot that's keeping his dread in system. So let's go back over to the Fortizar and think about what we might see if we just sat on that. Now, I keep warping back and forth from the keep star to the Fortizar. If these guys were really on the ball, maybe they would drop a bubble. Catch me out. So, but they don't know where I am. That's the big benefit of the cloak. So, they have no idea that I'm sitting here warping back and forth between the keep star and their Fortizar. So, we're sitting here keeping eyes on this fort. And we see an arc uh, undock, like we did a little bit ago. Okay, that's not a huge indicator of really anything. Just one jump freighter isn't some massive deal. But we could have, real quick, seen the name of that pilot, copied it down, make a little note. I keep a little notepad right here next to me. Say, okay, this pilot can fly an arc. And then potentially pass that name off to the rest of our FC and leadership team. And if in the future they're trying to catch a move op or some kind of uh, operation, they're trying to watch the logistics of the init guys moving around this Fortizar, they might be able to watch for that character. Let's see something, a prowler going up right here, Mystics. That prowler is CGB. Prowler is inter an interesting ship because it is often used as a fuel truck for blobs fleets, so bombers and black ops. It can be a very good way to track a bomber fleet if you know the fuel truck and their pilot's name. So we can note that down. Awesome. So we've been sitting on this Fortizar for five, ten minutes. Now we know information on both an ARC pilot and a black ops bridge. Or not a bridge, a Black Ops field truck, probably. Now, we haven't seen him work in with a Blops fleet before, but he very well could be. Big things we're looking for, we're looking for Titans, for Bridgers. If we see a Titan log in, perhaps we can put, pass that information off to our FCs and leaders, and they could track that Titan wherever he might go. And then we know where the fleet might be headed to in order to take another bridge, or we might be able to perhaps lay a little trap. Uh, same deal for a Black Ops battleship, because they act as bridgers for the bombers. We want to track those. Now, you see local just went up to about 80. It's been rising a little bit the whole time we've been in here. Not really any increase in newts or blues. So I'm expecting most of these to be in the fort, and they are. And you see a slight increase like this. Uh, I would imagine that they have some kind of scheduled event coming up, or they have some kind of fleet, or they are just coming in, and a bunch of them are coming online because it's their normal uh, schedule. So is this really all Cloaky Camping can do, is gather intelligence? Well, yeah. I mean... This uh, particular ship is pretty weak. It's a, it's you would say glass cannon, but not really. With bombs, it, you know, I can launch a bomb, but if I die before I warp, that bomb doesn't even explode. So I'm pretty soft. The real threat is my Sino, but the Sino only is a threat if there's a fleet behind it to jump to me. So. If you've got a cloaky camper in system, 
and there really isn't a fleet out there to come get him or to come to him, then you're pretty safe. Now, if I'm actively watching this tune and I see something come in that I want to go get, I can immediately ping my guys, ask them for a fleet, rage form, and I can say, hey, I need to go after this Bifrost, chase him down, scram, web, light sino, and in comes the fleet. So if you're out in a big ship and you're in some kind of siege or indie core cycle, uh, you could be trapped on grid, and that might just be enough time for somebody who's actively watching their cloaky camper to ping and form something. So, see, now we know that Immunin is staged in this Fortazar. And a couple of fun fleets, stuff, Cheetah, Ares. Uh, we saw the Staver before. No Soul Metal is a Munin pilot down here in the uh, Fortazar. All interesting. And see, now we're up to 75 when we were at 55 before. Oh, I know that guy. Oops, the Yashi. Anyway, so that's a little background on cloaky camping. This went about uh, 15 minutes, and that's about right. Uh, there are a couple more things you can do, but they're relatively minor. Um, go back to our safe location, and I'm going to go get some lunch. Uh, thank you all for tuning in.